Right, we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining me for part one of Caverns of the Snow Witch. As always with these live videos, big thank you to everybody watching me live. But please let me know if you can hear me and you can see me okay. I realised about 30 seconds ago that the actual entire microphone system was, was powered off. But it should be working now. But yeah, let me know. Um, we're going to be playing through, as voted on by Patreon supporters, Caverns of the Snow Witch. This is a fighting fantasy adventure game book. Uh, this is my original copy. So I actually purchased this when it came out. I think this is my original copy anyway. Um, 1984. I'm sure I've played through it, <laughs> but it was it was some time ago and I can't remember. Um, and if you haven't seen one of these interactive playthroughs before, basically what I'm going to be doing is playing through the adventure game book. So there's going to be spoilers, uh, but the people watching live, the audience, are going to be making the choices for me. I've also, in order to keep my Euro game friends happy, uh, I'm going with a resource management system <laughs> for the skills. So instead of uh, writing numbers and crossing them out and things like that, uh, I've actually just got cubes here. So this is going to represent my skill, my look, my stamina. We're going to use cubes for it. I've got me dice. We're going to jump in. Right. So, yes, I can blame you when I lose. Exactly right. Now, I'm not going to go through the full details of how you play Caverns of the Snow Witch. What I will say is that I've read through the rules and it is basically... Uh, the normal standard system for these fighting fantasy games where you've got your skill, your stamina and your look. You can test your look in combat. Every time you test your look, your look goes down by one. Uh, combat works in exactly the same way as normal. There are no changes to the, to the rules and the combat system in this one uh, than other ones. So we are going to make a start and we're going to generate our character. Now the rules are that you're supposed to roll one die and add six and that is your skill. Now we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to roll three dice and we're going to take the middle one. So it basically means they're not terraforming Mars cubes. They're actually cubes from Czech Games Edition. Um, I think from Through the Ages. So yeah, we're going to use three dice and take the middle one. So it's a one, a two and a six. So we've got a two. That means our skill is eight. Now apparently with this game, if you, make, if you take the one true path, uh, you can succeed no matter how bad your skills are. However... With a skill of eight, and I'm going to write it in here because that is our initial skill. Um, and it can't go above that, I believe. Right, we're going to do look next, and that's the same thing. Okay, so we've got a two, four, and a six, so we're going with four, so our look is ten. Now for stamina, it's supposed to be two dice plus twelve. So my first dice is a four, and my second dice is also a four. Um, so we start with 20 stamina. Okay, right, so that's our starting total. Um, now the reason why I've written it in there as well as using the cubes is that I believe it can't go above that original level. So let's just get these right. So there's my stamina. Uh, we have 10 look. Okay, there we go. Uh, the next thing is we start with, uh, I believe we start with escaping, look, using looking battles, stamina and provisions. So uh, when we are out of combat, we can uh, eat provisions. Each provisions we eat will restore four stamina points. And we start with, I'm sure it tells us how many we start with. Equipment and potions. Yes, yeah, so you start the game with a minimum of equipment. We've got a sword, we've got leather armor. Uh, you have a backpack to hold your provisions. Let's, let's put sword and leather armor on here. Sword and leather armor. Uh, and obviously if you're watching this video and you have played this game and you know the correct choices, please don't please don't put those answers in there. Please don't spoil it for us. Um, just watch along quietly and laugh at us as we, if, as we get it wrong. So the backpack can hold provisions and any treasures. In addition, we take a bottle of uh, magic potion. So this is the first choice. First choice that I want you to make is that we get to bring with us one potion and we can either bring with us a potion of skill which will when we drink it will restore our skill back to its starting level now from my recollection skill doesn't often go down um, we can bring a potion of strength which restores all of our stamina points which could be absolutely vital if we're low on stamina or we can bring a potion of fortune now when we drink a potion of fortune it restores all of our luck and add one adds one to our luck total so let me know in the chat uh, if you want me to bring a potion of skill, say the word, put the word skill, strength, put the word strength, or fortune, 
uh, put the word fortune. So if you put one of those three things in the chat, and basically in about a minute's time, we'll add up um, the results and we'll go with wh whatever the whatever the chosen one is. Right. Uh, potions, potions, potions. You can only bring one with you. Where's the starting provisions? I'm sure I read it. Your backpack contains enough provisions for 10 meals. Okay, so we have 10 meals. So I'm going to use, again, sticking with the Euro game theme, I'm going to use these green markers of which I don't have 10. Oh no, I do have 10. All right, so these are my provisions. Every time I eat one of these, I get four stamina back. I've got my blank piece of paper, as you can see, for my uh, map. And it is very likely, I'm going to be doing three videos, one today, one tomorrow, and one the day afterwards. Um, we might get it finished in that time. We might not, I don't know. Um, I might try and do some more if I can fit them in, because I do want to finish it. But it's likely that we're going to have to play through this multiple times. And the idea is that I'll make a map as we're going uh, and we can learn from our mistakes. Uh, we can make notes along the way. And hopefully, the more we play it, the more we play through it, uh, the better we will get. Um, there you go. There's the thing. There's a, there's a space on here for jewels and potions, but I'm, I'm just going to put them under equipment. There's also a space for gold, but I don't think we start with any gold. No, I don't remember it saying we start with any gold. Okay, so what is the chat saying? We have a lot of people saying Potion of Fortune. Lots of people saying. James is saying we should take 10 Brussels sprouts with us. So Chrissy has added it up and it looks like we are going with the Potion of Fortune. So I'm going to write that over here. Fortune. Okay, so yeah. So we every time we test our look, we lose one look. But the Potion of Fortune will restore it and add one to our look total. Right, if we're all sitting comfortably, I've got my glass of blackcurrant, and we're gonna make a start with the story. So, background. Winters in northern Alansia are always cruel and bitter. The snow falls thick and the icy wind blows hard, chilling everybody to the bone. For the past few weeks, you have been hired by a merchant called Big Jim Sun to protect his trading caravans as they roll their way slowly north to the frozen outposts. The horse-drawn carts are laden with cloth, utensils, weapons, salted meats, spices and tea, which are traded for furs and ivory carvings made from mammoth's tusks. Big Jim is not usually worried about travelling north, as bandits only attack his caravans on the return journey. He is not, he is not alone in recognising the value of the northern goods. On this particular trip, you are walking ahead of six carts across a frozen lake. In the distance, you can see the snow-capped peaks of the Ice Finger Mountains jutting out of low cloud. Your destination lies at the base of the mountains where the northern men, where the north men meet to trade. Snow is falling, but not too heavily. You stop to prod the ice with your sword to make sure it can bear the weight of carts. And when suddenly, the shrill call of a hunting horn breaks the silence. Insert sound effect here. You stand up and run back to the carts and talk to Big Jim. I guess this is Big Jim here. He is sitting next to the driver of the second cart, puffing on a long briar pipe. A huge man with a great bushy beard, Big Jim is obviously a man to be reckoned with. His bright blue eyes scan the horizon, searching for signs of life. In a deep voice he says, Sounds like it came from the outpost. Reckon you'd better go and investigate. Could be trouble. Get back quick. You set off straight away towards the outpost at the base of the Icefinger Mountains. You arrive two hours later at a scene of ugly carnage. The snow is red with blood and all the wooden huts are smashed and torn down. Six men lie dead their bodies slashed, their axes at their sides in the snow. Judging by the size of the footprints, the creature that attacked the outpost must, be, must have been enormous. There is nothing you can do for the unfortunate Northmen, so you head back towards Big Jim's caravan to report the news. You reach them in an hour, just as the daylight is fading, and relate the terrible events that have befallen the outpost. Big Jim orders the carts to be drawn into a circle to protect his men during the night. A large fire is built into the centre of the circle, and you sit down beside it to talk to Big Jim. Everybody is nervous, and a guard is posted to watch for signs of movement outside. In a low voice, Big Jim asks you if you will hunt the terrible creature, for otherwise his business will be ruined forever. You smile and reply that you will track down the beast, but only for a purse of 50 gold pieces. Big Jim's jaw drops open, and it takes a great deal of persuasion before he agrees to your demand. The snow finally stops falling as you settle down for the night, Sleep is a long time coming, for your mind is active with thoughts of the impending hunt. When you wake just after dawn, 
The fire is reduced to dying embers. Wisps of smoke rise gently into the morning mist, and not a sound is to be heard. You walk over to where Big Jim is sleeping and tap him on the shoulder. He wakes with a start, and you tell him that you are setting off and hope to be back later in the day. You wave to the guard as the snow starts to fall again. and Make your way back to the outpost. Right, so that is the introduction. Just a couple of things before we start. For those who don't know, one of the reasons why I'm doing uh, the Fighting Fantasy books is that my first introduction to gaming was in the very early 80s with these books. If it weren't for these Fighting Fantasy books, uh, which I spotted when I was like 12 years old in a bookshop for the first time, that got me into uh, these books, got me into role-playing games, got me into buying games from the local shop that sold board games. Basically, my entire life is because of, uh, of, of these books. So yeah, big thank you to Steve Jackson and Ian, Liv Ian, Li Ian Livingstone for basically creating this. Um, and yeah, that, that's, that's one reason why I'm doing it. Um, the second thing I wanted to say, a big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. This is obviously not a sponsored video, uh, but a lot of the content that I create on the channel is only made possible through the support of the Patreon campaign. So if you are watching this video and you like the content that I create, obviously I normally cover board games, but yeah, if you want to support the channel directly, you can at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Right. Off we go then. Let's make a start. Section one. By the time you reach the outpost again, the bodies are blanketed with snow and the beast's footprints are covered over. The visibility is poor as you set off towards the mountains where you hope to find the abominable killer beast. The snow on the mountainside is soft and you sink, up, sink in up to your knees as you climb slowly up. You soon find yourself at the edge of a crevasse, which is spanned by an ice bridge. Okay, we have our first choice coming up. Well, our second choice. We can cross the crevasse by the ice bridge. If you want me to do that, put the word bridge in the chat. Or we could walk around the crevasse. If you want me to do that, put the word walk. So the two options are bridge or walk. So we have reached, uh, we are at the edge of a crevasse with an ice bridge. And I'm just going to start the map. Now I don't know, I don't know whether to start here and go across or here and go down. I've, I've no idea. So I'm going to go left to right on this one. Um, we have our first choice and I'm going to, I'm going to try and draw. So we have a crevasse and we have a, we have an ice bridge. Okay, and then we have we have we have a road round. So the road round is three one oh and the bridge is three three five. Okay, so this is where we are. And just to keep the gamers happy, I'm gonna use a meeple to represent where we are. There you go. So there's us. We can either cross the ice bridge or we can go round. Let's see what the chat says. Uh, oh, and this is number one. We are at number one. Why did I write a zero? Maybe put it in a circle or something. I'll just put a number one. Right, number one so that we don't lose track of where we are. And yes, thank you, Joel. Please remember to give the video a thumbs up. You can do that if you're watching this live or if you're watching this afterwards. Uh, and yeah, as Joel says, I do have plans for when I get to 800 supporters. I'm currently 21 supporters away from 800. Uh, unlikely to make it by the end of this year, but that's fine. Hopefully make it early next year. So what have we got? 10 people saying we should go across the bridge and eight people walking around. Right, we're going to go with the bridge. Fairly close one. Oh, I love these games. <laughs> um, 335. They're very nostalgic. They're very old school. You know, we can turn to an entry and suddenly die. Um, we, we, but, you know, they're good fun. They're good fun. 335, we are crossing the ice bridge. The bridge is quite narrow and very slippery. We have to test our luck. Okay, so, 335, here we go. So we're testing our luck. Our luck is 10, but remember, every time we test our luck, our luck goes down by one, because eventually, your luck will run out. We've rolled a six, so we are lucky, but our luck has gone down by one. I've also been wanting to write my own fighting fantasy game book for the last 30 years and never got around to it. One of these days. Right, so we are lucky, we turn to 41. 41. You tread carefully over the bridge. Safely across the crevasse, you continue your slow trek through the snow. Turn to 212. Right, okay, so we're going over here. We got across. There you go, there's the ice bridge. 212. That's where we now are. Okay, we didn't die. We've been playing for 10 minutes and we're not dead yet. I think that's a success. 
212. The wind starts to howl, blowing gusts of snow into your face. You put your head down and stride into it. Above the howl of the wind, you suddenly become aware of another sound, the howling of wolves. You draw your sword while trying to peer through the snow. As if out of nowhere, two snow wolves appear in front of you, hunched, ready to pounce. They are completely white except for their blood red eyes. Suddenly, one leaps at you. Fight them one at a time. Right, so these are the wolves, and we have our first fight. So basically, um, I need to write down the stats of the monsters. We're going to fight them separately. And I'm going to use cubes to represent them. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Where's the rest of my red cubes? Uh, there's my red cubes. So the first one has seven stamina. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it has eight skill. Um, where am I going to write that down? I don't, I don't have anywhere to write that down, so I'm going to use coins from Maracaibo <laughs> to represent its skill. Right, so our first enemy has 8 skill and 7 stamina, and I need to put something in there. Okay, so the way that combat works, let me just check, because it's been a while, and I've played a couple of other of these game books since. Um, do you roll at the same time? Or not, I can't remember. Roll both dice for the creature, add its skill. Roll both dice for yourself and add your skill. And if your attack strength is higher, you've wounded it and you it loses two stamina. Otherwise, it's wounded you. You can use luck if you want to. Uh, and if you both roll the same, nothing happens. Right, okay, so very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to roll all of the dice at the same time. So I'm rolling the black dice for my enemy, which has got eight skill. Uh, I also have eight skill. So it's basically whoever rolls the highest on the dice. Are we ready? Feed them a Brussels sprout. Yeah, could do. <laughs> okay, well, the enemy has rolled nine, and I've rolled snake eyes, so I lose two stamina. Now, I could test my luck in order to make that only one stamina, but I'm, I'm not going to. Right, we are carrying on to fight the first wolf. It'd be funny if we die in this first fight. Uh, okay, so enemy's got a four, I've got a nine. Loses two stamina. I remember playing these games as a kid on the... Uh, on the bus or in class or something like that. So enemy's got a six, I've got a seven. There you go, take that wolf. Uh, oh, enemy got an eight, but I got an 11. There you go, it's almost dead. So if I tested my luck now, now I want to save my luck for crossing ice bridges. This is all right, and we have 10 provisions. Yeah, we've got loads of provisions, we're fine, we're fine. Uh, so it got a six and I got a seven. So the first wolf is dead. Right, now it did say fight them one at a time. And the second one only has seven skill. So it's got seven stamina again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I don't know why it has seven stamina, because you always deal two damage when you kill it. So, uh, so I'm basically at plus one on this one. I've got eight skill, it's got seven skill. So it rolled a seven, but I rolled a ten. So there you go. Wounded it. If we go again. Oh, it rolled an 11 and I rolled an 8. So it's wounded me. So it got me. Bit me in the leg. Uh, it got a 5. I got a 4. But because I'm at plus 1, that's evens. So nobody wounds the other. Uh, I got a 4. It got an 8. Oh, this wolf's nasty. Right, come on, Paul. Get your better dice rolling hands on. Uh, yep, that's good. So I've wounded it. It's down to three stamina. I'm probably going to eat some provisions after this, I think. Uh, I've got seven, it's got six. One more, the wolf is on its last legs. Uh, it got five, I got four. So we're evens. Uh, yeah, I've done it. So I got an 11. Right, okay, so it is dead. Yeah, I think if you test your luck in a fight when you're attacking, you do double damage if you succeed. Um, yeah, if you've wounded the creature, oh, if you were unlucky, then you only deal one damage to it. Right, okay, yeah, I can see that. Uh, so we have done, the battle is over, but I am going to eat some provisions to get four stamina back. There you go, right. We have won, we have defeated both wolves, turn to 2-0-2. 
You step past the still bodies of the wolves and continue your journey through the swirling snow. The climb becomes steeper and the going is slow. Turn to 337. Right, okay, so we need to put wolves here. Wolves, and then we're going along and it's 337 is next. Okay, 337. The snow is beginning to fall he very heavily, swirling around in the strong wind. A blizzard is starting. Okay, so we have options. We have another choice coming for you. Uh, we can use our sword to dig a shelter in the snow. If you want me to do that, put the word shelter in the chat. Or we could press on. If you want me to do that, put the words press on. So basically there is a blizzard starting and we can either dig a shelter with our sword or we can press on. Let me know which one you want me to do. Skinning the wolves for more provisions. If this was a role-playing game, that's exactly what we'd do. We would skin the wolves, cut them, milk, cut them up, cook the meat, and get more provisions. But limited options. Oh, these are the Brussels sprouts. Ah, right. Okay, yes. So we only have nine Brussels sprouts left. <laughs> I like it. Um, and yeah, while the chat is talking, as I say, my introduction to gaming was, was these books. And I started with the first one, Warlock of Firetop Mountain, before then getting into uh, D and D, um, yeah. So, so th this came for me before role playing games. Right, what have we got? Oh, well, we got a good mix. Shelter, press on, press on, shelter, 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 press on, press on, press on, shelter, 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 shelter. Okay, so yeah, it was more for shelter than pressing on. So we are going to. Dig a shelter with our sword. 281. You hurriedly cut blocks of ice out of the mountainside and build a makeshift igloo. You crawl into it as the blizzard blows down the mountain with ferocious power. Your body heat is retained inside the igloo and you keep warm. I think this was the right choice. However, you must eat two portions of your provisions to regain your strength after the tiring walk and the effort of building the igloo. This does not increase your stamina. It doesn't say what happens if you don't have the two provisions. Okay, but I assume at this point, you probably do have the two provisions. So there we go, we've eaten two more Brussels sprouts. An hour later, the blizzard dies down and you crawl out of your shelter to continue your quest. So, a blizzard. Dot, 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 dot. And we're now going on to 169. Six, nine. There we go. Right. Underneath an overhanging rock, you see a small wooden hut built against the side of the mountain. Its roof is piled high with snow and long icicles hang down from the window ledges. You see a set of deep footprints leading from the hut up the side of the mountain. Okay, choices again. We can enter the hut. If you want me to do that, put the word hut in the chat, or we can follow the footprints in the snow. If you want me to do that, put the word footprints. So the two options are entering the hut or following the footprints. So the word hut or the word footprints. So we're at a hut and there is a set of footprints, deep footprints leading from the hut up the side of the mountain. So we don't know whether the person is, well no, they're, they're going from the hut up the side of the mountain. So it sounds like the hut is empty. I wonder if the hut is called Jabba. Okay, let's see what the chat is saying. Oh, lots of lots of choices. I'm seeing I'm seeing lots of huts, and then lots of footprints. I'll try and count them myself and see if it ties up. Thank you very much, Chrissy. Chrissy is doing all of the counting of the answers. Um, okay, so. Hut, 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 hut. So there's five footprints. Hut, 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 hut. Sound like an American football player. So I'm counting 12, 1. And then footprints, 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 footprints. So that's 12, 7, 13, 7, 13, 8, 13, 9, or 14, 9. Yeah, it looks like we're going into the hut. Right. Thank you very much for those choices. I will keep my finger in the page just in case. Oh, I'm going to write this on. Hut. That's what I could be doing. Save time while you're voting. 
hut. I might draw a little hut. There you go. Check out my artistic skills. Zero. Okay, we are entering the hut. Down to 36. Uh, the front door of the hut is frozen shut, and you have to batter it with your shoulder to open it. There is only one room inside the hut containing the belongings of a fur trapper. Traps, furs and sacks are stacked in a corner of the room. A wooden bed, a table and chair, and some cooking utensils show sign of recent use, and the ashes in the fire are still warm. Okay, choices again. Uh, we can put some logs on the fire and warm up the cold stew in one of the pans. If you want me to do that, put the word stew uh, in the chat. Or we can leave the hut and continue our quest. If you want me to do that, put the word leave. So the two options are stew, S-T-E-W, as opposed to S-T-U, uh, or what was the other option? Continue, I think. Yeah, I think continue. So this is a fur trapper who's presumably out trapping furs and putting some logs on the fire and warming up the cold stew in one of the pans. Sounds a bit rude. We break into his house. <laughs> but I will leave it up to you. Whatever you want me to do. I will put a number 36 next to the hut. And I'm not going to draw a fur trapper. So yeah, I... I'm sure I must have played this at some point, but I have almost no memory about it. And the reason why I'm doing this one specifically is that I actually put a poll up on my Patreon page last week with a picture of all of the uh, game books that I currently have. The fighting fantasy ones anyway, because I do have other ones. Um, and this one got the same number of votes as Island of the Lizard King, but more people had put this one as their first choice. Uh, so I think it is a, well, it's certainly a popular one. It's the one that got the most votes. But looking into it and reading a little bit about it, it appears to be one of the uh, most well-liked ones. So, what have we got? Okay, so <laughs> one person thinks we should leave. Who's the one person that thinks we should leave? Um, because you might be right. Matt, Matt thinks that we should leave. Well, the rest of the chat says we're going to stay and start eating this guy's food. So we're going to put some logs on the fire and warm up some of the cold stew in one of the pans. 118. The fire is soon roaring and crackling in the hearth. The heat of the flames radiates through your body and you revel in the warmth. The stew is delicious and you feel your strength returning. Add three stamina points. Okay, we can't go above 20. So we're back up to 20. With renewed energy, you decide to leave the hut and continue your quest. Oh, right, okay. So, <laughs> no worries about um, no worries about getting interrupted by him. We just go in, break in, steal his food, eat his food, and then leave. Side story, the fur trapper returns, find all his food's gone and starves to death. Oh, sad times. Sad times. I just made that bit up. Right, anyway, we are continuing our quest. 192. Okay. One, nine, two. So apart from that initial choice, it's been linear so far. And I suspect that initial choice probably just led you around here. And this has been linear so far. Some of them, like City of Thieves that we did last time, it was a branching thing right from the start. Uh, and you choose to go left, straight on or right. And you can't actually get back once you've made that choice. Uh, and that made that one very replayable because, yeah, lots of different ways to go. Anyway, we are leaving with a full belly of, of stew. 192. Oh, as you are about to leave the hut, so we've not quite left the hut, you catch sight of some weapons lying under the bed. Right, okay, more choices. More choices. So we're, we've, we're just about to leave the hut and there's some weapons lying under the bed. Do we take a couple of them with us? If you want us to do that, put the word weapons. Or if you do not wish to be encumbered by the additional weight and would rather leave without the weapons, so if you want me to do that, put the word leave. So the two options now are weapons or leave. We can take a couple of weapons with us. So as well as stealing his food, we're going to steal his weapons. Uh, or we can leave without the weapons. The chat is saying weapons. You just want me to steal his stuff. <laughs> and again, that's the good thing with... Uh, if you do this multiple times, we, we will learn, presumably, from the things that go wrong and not do them again. In fact, I can put this over here. 
Put that over there. That looks better. Right, so Corrimore213 says, uh, says leave. Everybody else is saying weapons, I think. Oh, no, Peter's saying leave as well. Yeah, I think the majority of the chat are saying weapons. Marty saying leave, brackets, didn't even want to come in the hut in the first place. <laughs> he doesn't need the weapons. I mean, to be fair, he has left. He's gone off trapping and he hasn't taken the weapons with him. So they must be spare. They must be spare. Yeah, it looks like the majority of the chat is saying weapons. So we're, we're going to go with weapons. Right. 255. Uh, you take a war hammer and a spear before leaving the hut. Okay, so I guess we write that on our equipment. We're just stealing his stuff. So a war hammer. And a spear. Okay. Right, and now we've left the hut. 263. Uh, outside again in the deep snow, you set off on your trek up the mountainside, following the footprints in the snow. Oh right, so we're going to follow the trapper. And then he's going to say, wait a minute, why have you got my warhammer and spear? And <laughs> who's been eating my stew? Right, okay, we're off up the mountain. So, that, no, it's 192, it's now 190. Okay. Yeah, 190, following the mountain, following the footprints up the snow. I should have done this as a thing, shouldn't I? Because we're climbing. Right, 190. Here we go. How are we doing for time? Half five and we're not dead. Wow. The high altitude and thin atmosphere make, your, make you pant for breath as you continue your steady climb. Lose one stamina point. There you go. Suddenly you hear the cry of a human voice, followed by a ferocious roar. Not far ahead you see a fur trapper, fighting for his life against a gigantic bear-like beast with long white fur and sharp teeth protruding from its jaws. It is the killer beast that you have been hunting, the abominable yeti. You watch the unfortunate trapper being gashed by the yeti's claws and falling face down in the snow. Incensed by the vicious attack, you scream at the yeti and run through the snow to attack it. Okay, let's do that. Oh, look at this. So this is the trapper. Oh, look at this sword that he's got. He's very, very fancy. We could steal that from his dead body. Um. So, we are attacking the Yeti, apparently. We don't have a choice. 77. Are you carrying a spear? Well, yes, we are. <laughs> if you are, turn to 391. Now, this might be bad. This might be that the guy realises that we've stolen his spear. Or this might be good. 391. If you have frostbite in your sword arm... No, we do not. Okay. So turn to 249. This is looking good. I'm assuming frostbite is bad. 249. Gripping the shaft tightly, you pull back your arm and hurl the spear at the snarling yeti. Roll one die. Right, okay. So basically, if we roll the one, we're dead. Oh yes, we were bringing the weapons to him. That's it. Because we knew that he'd be in trouble, so we're bringing him his weapons. Yeah, okay. Here we go. We've rolled a one. Now... This is, if you roll the one turn to this, if you roll a two or greater turn to this. So I'm assuming a one is bad. We will do it as per the book, but if this is an automatic death, I'm probably going to fudge this. Because um, that would be unfortunate. 157. The shaft is icy and it slips from your grip as you release it. The spear misses the yeti, plummeting harmlessly into the snow. Okay, let me just write something on here. So this is yeti. 190. We can always come back to 190 if we want to. So we've 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 missed with the spear. Turn to 378. We're probably just going to have to fight it now. And it's probably really tough. It's really tough. We might we might not win this fight, okay? Um it has got 11 skill and 12 stamina. So the game assumes that you will hit it with the spear. <laughs> um so yeah, so it's got 12, no, 11 skill and 12 stamina. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I am going to play through this fight 
Uh, but then if we fail this fight, I'm probably not going to restart it. I'm probably just going to go back to that throwing the spear again because we were un unlucky there. Right, so we're at 8 skill. It's at 11, so we are at minus 3. So the chances of us succeeding here are very, very slim. Okay, minus 3 to us. So we need to roll, yeah, a lot higher. Well, it's got a 12, so that, that's a good start. Forget, forget that, we'll just... I, I think if we hit it, we need to test our luck. That's what we need to do. So it's got a 7, we've got a 7, but we're at minus 3. Yeah, this is going to be over fairly soon, I think. With these odds. Uh, we got a 9. It got a 7. But unfortunately, it's at plus 3. Yeah, can anybody tell me the odds of us getting higher than it on 2d6? With it at effectively at a plus 3. I think it's quite slim. Yep, here we go. Oops. And another, yeah, so that's what, five in a row that we've lost, or six in a row? I think six in a row. Uh, seven in a row. Uh, it's got a seven, we've got a nine. Yeah, I think there might be an undo happening here. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely mauled by a Yeti. Okay, so there's our first playthrough. We got killed by a Yeti. Rather than restart right from the start and go through it all again, I'm just going to undo to the point where we threw the spear. Uh, what, what stamina was I on? I think I was on 19. There we go. Right. Okay. So that didn't happen. Rewind. It was 190. Attack the Yeti. 77. Do you have a spear? 391. Uh, do you have frostbite in your sword arm? No. Turn to 249. Right. Right, we're throwing the spear at the Yeti. Oh look, I've rolled a two. Fantastic. It's a good job I didn't roll a one. I think a one might be bad. Okay, we've thrown the spear at the Yeti. The spear flies through the air and thuds into the Yeti's shaggy chest. It roars in pain but does not fall. You quickly draw your sword to fight the enraged beast. So it's got 10 skill and 9 stamina. Okay, it's still going to be bad. <laughs> um, but, yes. I mean, that's the nature of these books. They, they are definitely of their time, and they are exciting, and they are fun. Uh, but that, for me, was like, well, wait a minute. You've got the spear. You don't have frostbite. And then it's a 1 in 6 chance that you might get completely screwed. So, yeah. I'm happy with undoing that. And again, this is still not good, because our skill, we rolled... Slightly lower than average. Okay, so that's going in there. We are fighting again. So this time, um, yeah, skill ten versus skill eight. So we're on a, we're on a. Effectively, it's on a plus two. Right, off we go. So, oh, we've done it. So it's got a seven. Plus two is nine. We've got an eleven. So I am going to test my luck, because if if we succeed. We're going to do four damage instead of two. So our luck is uh, our luck is nine at the moment. We've rolled a five, so we've got a lucky hit. We've dealt four damage to it. There you go, four damage. Next round of combat. Oh, we've done it again. But I'm not going to test my luck again this time. It's got a five, plus two is seven. We got an eight. Well, that, yeah, I mean, that was lucky. I don't think I'm going to test my luck again. No, not yet. We'll see how we get on with the next hit. Okay, it's got an 8, we've got a 4. Yeah, Yeti has got us. Uh, oh, it's got a 3, we got a 7. So 3 plus 2, yeah, it's fine. 
Okay? I don't think I'm going to test my luck because we just need one more hit. And we've got all those Brussels sprouts still. Okay, he's definitely got us that time. He's getting angry. He's only on one health. Uh, I think we've done it. 7, 9, we got 11. Yes! We rolled a lot better that time than we did the previous time. Okay, so we've beaten the Yeti. Have I written Yeti on? I have written Yeti on. Uh, spear, good. Right, turn to 67. 67. Are we ready? You kneel down beside the fur trapper and turn him over slowly. His eyes are barely open and blood trickles down from the corner of his mouth. The Yeti has gouged deep wounds in his chest and you realise there is no hope of saving him. With a great effort, he reaches up and grabs you around the neck, pulling you down so that you can hear his dying words. He thanks you for trying to save him and insists on telling you his secret. In terrible pain, he struggles to whisper his story. He tells you that he has lived in the mountains for most of his life, hunting animals and trading their furs. But for the last five years, he has been searching for the legendary Crystal Caves. These caves have been cut out of a glacier by the followers of the Snow Witch, a beautiful yet evil sorceress who is trying to use her dark powers to bring on an ice age so that she can rule supreme over the whole world. The entrance to the Crystal Caves is high up on this very mountain. It is open, but hidden by an illusion. The unfortunate fur trapper found it by accident only yesterday, when he saw one of the Snow Witch's warriors seemingly walk straight through an ice wall and disappear. The trapper left a piece of fur hanging over the entrance so that he could find it again the next day. Sadly, the Yeti has put an end to his hopes. He asks you to enter the caves to slay the vile Snow Witch and leave her followers without their leader. There are legends about great treasures being frozen into the wall of the Snow Witch's lair, which would prove ample reward. The fur trapper suddenly grips you hard and then falls back silently into the snow. He's dead. You cover him with snow before deciding what to do. Fifty gold pieces await you if you return with the evidence of the Yeti's death to Big Jim's son. But the thought of a quest through the Crystal Caves beneath Icefinger Mountains excites you, and you decide to set off and find them. Right, off we go then. 25. So that's actually just the, the prelude to the adventure, isn't it? And it's all about Caverns of the Snow Witch. Right, 25. Now that the snow has stopped falling, the sky is clear and blue. The air is cold and crisp and the snow crunches beneath your feet. Slowly you make your way up the mountainside, looking for the cave entrance marker left by the fur trapper. Suddenly you hear a distant rumbling from above, the terrifying sound of an avalanche. Test your luck. Right, okay, so we need to go... 25. So our look is currently 8. We are not lucky and we lose a look. It might be time to drink that potion. Okay. Um, we are unlucky. Again, if this is buried by the avalanche, you lose the game. Then I'll be keeping my finger in that page. You look up and see great cascades of snow tumbling down the mountainside. With horror, you realise that you are standing in the path of the avalanche. You look around and see an outcrop under which you could shelter. The approaching mass of snow is no more than a hundred metres away and you struggle to run for cover. Roll two dice. If the total is the same or less than your skill... Okay, here we go. Yes, easily. Um, turn to 81. You dive under the outcrop as the snow crashes down all around. Pressing yourself as close as you can against the ice-covered wall of your shelter, you wait until the avalanche has passed by. With a sigh of relief, you set off again in search of the Crystal Caves. Okay, so avalanche. Okay, and now we are going off again. 363. You make your way slowly up Oh, I've just noticed this has got a pencil mark around it. So 35 years ago when I played this game, I've drawn a box around this and I don't know why. You make your way slowly up the mountain until you reach a rock face that is too steep to climb. You walk around the side until you see a massive wall of ice which completely blocks a gully between two peaks of the mountain, the glacier. Your heart leaps as you catch sight of the piece of fur left hanging on the wall of ice by the trapper. 
Although you cannot see the entrance, you walk straight ahead. You shut your eyes as you think you are about to walk into the wall of ice, but you walk straight through the illusion and find yourself inside a long tunnel carved into the ice. You walk down it and soon arrive at a T-junction. Okay, next choice, left or right. Very simply, it is left or right. So we have gone through the wall. We are now inside. So I'm going to write, I'm going to draw a wall there. We're inside. Uh, we're in a tunnel and we can go left or we can go right. Okay, so this is 363. Uh, and left is 395. Fine, let's do it a different way. And right is 215. And completely random choices here. You've got no information to go on. It is literally just left or right. This is a good save point, actually, because I think this is where the, the proper adventure might start. I think all of this is fairly linear, leading you up to this point. Um, yeah, but I mean, next time I play, maybe I'll walk around the crevasse. Maybe I will ignore the hut. No, I won't ignore the hut, because we know that going in the hut is good. Um, and we know that getting the spear is good, because you need that to fight the yeti. If you don't have the spear, fighting the yeti is really hard, unless you get get more skill. Should we also eat a provision? I think we should eat some Brussels sprouts. We're going to eat some Brussels sprouts and restore some of our, our lost health. There you go. We're back to 19. So, yeah, it sounds like young Paul is suggesting we restart from here if you die. Maybe that's what I've done. So we've got 13 votes for left and 5 votes for right. You're clearly all lefty people. If you wish to walk left, turn to 395. Okay, let's do it. The tunnel bends around to the right. As you turn the corner, you almost bump into a tall, pale-skinned humanoid coming the other way. He is wearing a white cloak with a hood pulled over his head. He is a mountain elf, one of the Snow Witch's followers. Right, we have three options here. Um, so this is a follower of the Snow Witch. It's a mountain elf. Don't know whether he's good or bad, but we've got three choices. We can nod your head at him and walk by nonchalantly. Uh, if you want me to put, if you want me to do that, put the word nonchalantly in the chat. I'm just messing with you. Um, the other option is that we can tell him we have come to join the Snow Witch's followers. If you want me to do that, put the word join or attack him with your sword. So the three options are nonchalantly, join or attack. And meanwhile, I will update the map because it says that it bends around to the right and there's an elf. Draw a little stick man. I'm going to put elf. So we've got three options here. And going back to my days as a as a teenager when I was playing D and I used to love drawing maps. I mean, I used to be the GM of our our group, and I've I've created so many adventures and dungeons over the years. Yeah, creating maps was one of the things that I really like to do. I mean, I don't know where they are, but I've 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 done in the past. Um, you know, influenced by Forgotten well Realms and Greyhawk, I've got huge hex maps of entire worlds with cities and everything over them. Um, yeah, I, I presumably lost over the decades, but yeah, I did all of that, as I'm sure many of you have done. Right, what have we got? So, 11 nonchalantly, 4 join and 2 attack. Right, okay, we are... <laughs> How many people spell nonchalantly correctly? Oh, most people. Okay, so we are going to nod our head at him and walk by nonchalantly. It's a great word, isn't it? 89. Test your luck. Okay, now we were going to potentially drink our luck potion, and I haven't done I might do after this. We've got seven luck. We've done it. We are, we are lucky. Remind me, I'm going to drink the Potion of Fortune in a minute. If you are lucky, turn to 331. 
Uh, the mountain elf does not suspect that you are an intruder and you are able to walk casually past him nonchalantly. Right, we're going to drink our potion of fortune. So what that does is it restores our luck and adds one to our initial luck value. So our luck is now 11. There we go. That's pretty good. How do you think it's working with these cubes? I think it's working quite well. This is a lot easier than keep rubbing something out and crossing it out. Right, 241. So we are going past, and it is now 241. Uh, yeah, off we go. I don't know about you, but I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> I mean, I wanted to do this because we did it last year, and a lot of people joined in and said... Um, you know, are you going to do another one? And I was like, yeah, okay, I, I, I remember enjoying it, but I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying this a lot more than, uh, than I thought I would. The tunnel forks and you must decide quickly which way to go. You can hear the sound of running feet coming down the branch to your right. If you wish to run down the left branch, turn to 321, or head down the right branch to face whoever is coming towards you. Right, so we have, uh, we have a choice. We can go left or right, but there is running feet coming down the branch to our right. Take that into account when you're deciding whether we go left or right. If we go left, I guess we're going to avoid them. What was this? This was 241. I don't know if you can see this map that I'm doing. It's a bit... It's a bit small, but you get the idea. I mean, I'm sure you can go online and you can find other people's maps. But I never want to look at maps before I play it. Kind of spoils it. But I tell you what, after last year when we did Freeway Fighter, um, I did go online and look at some maps afterwards. And that was interesting because they did... Um, obviously, we were making a map last time and that was quite useful because Freeway Fighter was very much a, a Time Stories-like game. In which case you would play it, die, play it, die, play it, oh, get a bit further, die, play it, go a different way around, and really, really learn. Uh, that wasn't the last one we did. But then I also did uh, City of Thieves, which I think I did earlier this year. Um, and that was an interesting one, because we actually went through it, we did it in one go. Whether we took the right route, I don't know, but it was a really good one. I really enjoyed the setting of City of Thieves, very evocative. Um, but yeah, we did, we did that in one go. Right, what have we got then? Three-way fighter. No, freeway fighter. <laughs> uh, so Andy's asking which other books have I streamed. So I remember doing Forest of Doom. But I only did that for one day. So we, we didn't complete that. Uh, we did Forest of Doom. Freeway fighter we did at this time last year. And we played that four or five times until we did it. Uh, and City of Thebes, we did it to completion. But I think we did it over maybe two or three. So yeah. Right, nine votes for left. We are going left. Um, what was left? Two, four, one. Left was three, two, one. Three, two, one. Okay, you have only gone 10 metres down the tunnel when the ice floor suddenly cracks and gives way under your weight. You fall down into an ice pit, a trap made by the Snow Witch's followers. Roll one die and deduct the number you have rolled from your stamina. And then if you're still alive, we, which we will be. Okay, we've lost two stamina. Probably not going to drink, uh, not going to eat some Brussels sprouts just yet. Um, so we are still alive. Two, five, four. Okay, so we've fallen down a pit. So I'm going to draw a pit on the map. Right, next. Two, five, four. I'm going to sneeze in a minute as well. You groan with pain as you try to stand up. Looking up to see how far you have fallen, you are dismayed to see two ugly faces staring down at you. A rope is thrown down to you and you are ordered to throw your sword up to the goblins before climbing up the rope. You are trapped in the pit and reluctantly comply with their orders. As you are about to climb, you notice that both the goblins are holding the rope. If you wish to climb up, or we can pull hard on the rope to attempt to pull them down into the pit. Okay, so two options. 
Uh, let me know which one you want me to do. We can climb up the rope or we can pull the goblins down into the pit. Now, bear in mind, if we do that, we're probably going to be stuck around the pit. But it's your choice. Climb or pull. <laughs> which one do you want me to do? Um, there are also another series of game books. Uh, the Sorcery series of game books by Steve Jackson. They were really popular back in the day. They've actually been converted into a digital adaptation. I think I've got all four parts of those. Um, and I think I've actually covered it once on the channel a couple of years ago. But I'm very tempted to play them again. Um, so yeah, Choose Your Own Adventure books are available uh, online in various places. Did we lose our sword? I think we have lost our sword. The goblins have the sword. We've given the sword to the goblins. And they are now holding the rope as we, we're we going to climb up. Uh, Way of the Tiger books are very good, apparently, yeah. I don't have any of the Way of the Tiger books, um, but they are done by two of my favourite authors. So Oliver Johnson and Dave Morris um, did a whole load of game books, including Blood Sword, including Dragon Warriors. They were very influential as well into my uh, upbringing into games. Uh, and yeah, the Way of the Tiger books are also really good. Okay, so how many choices have we got? We got six for th six for climb and 13 for pull. Uh, although since then Janet has said climb, but that's still not enough. It looks like we're going to try and pull them down into the pit. Okay, here we go. Three, one, four. I suspect this might be bad. You tug down hard on the rope hoping that the goblins are as stupid as they look. Test your luck. Now our luck is 11. So we have a 2% chance of failing this, I think. We've done it. Our luck is now down to 10. Uh, if you are lucky, turn to 188. We are. Neither of the goblins releases the rope and both tumble headlong into the pit. Only one of the two picks himself up the other remaining face down on the ice floor. With blood streaming from his nose, the angry goblin pulls a dagger from his belt and tries to stab you. In the confined space of the pit, you must defend yourself with bare hands. During each round of combat, you must reduce your attack strength by three, as you are without your sword. Okay, so we are fighting at a skill of five, and the goblin is also fighting at a skill of five. However, the goblin only has four stamina. Okay, so here we go. Uh... We're basically evens, aren't we? Yeah, because we're fighting barehanded against uh, against the goblin with a dagger. So we've rolled an eight, it's rolled a nine. So the goblin stabbed us with its dagger. Right, next. Uh, we got a six, it got a seven. The goblin stabbed us with his dagger again. Goblin stabbed us with his dagger again. This is no good. Come on, dice. Yes, we got an 11. Right, now if we test our luck, we're probably going to win this. But I think we're going to need our luck for later. And we still have some Brussels sprouts. We do still have six Brussels sprouts. 10 against... Yes, we got him. I was touch and go for a minute there, isn't it? 366. 366. You search through the clothing of the goblins and find some salted fish a candle, and two gold pieces. Woo! -hoo. So, salted fish. I don't know if we're supposed to write this down or not, but I'm going to. A candle. And two gold pieces. Which you decide to keep. Both goblins are wearing metal collars around their necks, which you cannot remove. Taking the dagger from the goblin you slew, you cut hand and toe holds into the side of the pit and haul yourself up. Picking up your sword, you decide which way to head, wondering if there are any more traps further down the tunnel. Okay, so two choices here. Um, we can continue along this corridor. If you want me to do that, put the word continue, or we can walk back to where the tunnel forked and go down the other branch. So if you want me to continue, put the word continue. If you want me to go back, put the word back. Let me know which. If we cut the heads off, we can't get the metal rings from their neck stumps. We probably could, 
I don't know why we'd want the, uh, the, the metal rings. So what's the chat saying? We've got, oh, we got lots of continues, but we've also got lots of backs. We're going to have to add these up. <laughs> continue, 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 back. Back, we should knock these off, back, back, back. Back, continue, 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 back, back, continue, continue. I think it's continue. I think we've got, yeah, plus five on continue. So that's what we're going to do. Thank you to everybody for voting. And if you're watching this live and you're not voting, just sign into YouTube and get involved. You can help me make these decisions. Because uh, we've currently got about 20 people voting each time. I think it's about 20 people voting. And we've got about 40 people watching live. So... Yep, yeah, if you're, I mean, you're welcome to just watch live and uh, enjoy. But if you wanted to join in the voting, just sign into YouTube and you can do that. Right. I've turned to a page and I've lost where we were. Was it 365? It could have been 365. I'm going to have to go back, unfortunately. I could just look for the goblins. I'm looking for the picture of the goblins. Because I've lost track of where I am. I've written a few numbers on there, but not enough. Is that the goblins? Come on, goblins, where are you? If anybody knows a number of where we were, let me know. Try not to look at the pictures whilst looking at the pictures. Because <laughs> I'm looking for looking for the goblins. Unless it was 241. Was 241 the goblins? No, 241 was the pit. We, we, we'll go back to 241 if we can't find where we were up to. That's not a goblin. No, that's something else. Right, so we were at 241. Uh, 241, we went down the left branch, which was 321. Then we fell down the pit, which was 254. There's the goblins. Then we pulled hard on the rope, which was 314. We were lucky, which was 188. We then fought, which was 366. And then we went, we were continued down, which was 88. Right. 88, here we go. The tunnel continues for some distance before opening out into a circular cave. Another tunnel leads out of the cave directly opposite. You are suddenly met by a strange sight. There are two small pools in the floor uh, with steam gently rising from them. Protruding from one pool is the hilt of a sword and from the other, the shaft of a spear. The frozen body of an orc lies against the wall, its arm rigid and pointing towards the sword. As you approach the pools, you see a rhyme carved in the ice floor which reads, sword or spear, strength or fear, how to choose, win or lose. You stand and ponder the rhyme, trying to decide what to do. Will you draw the sword from its pool? If you want me to say, if you want me to do that, put the word sword. Or pull out the spear from the pool. If you want me to do that, put the word spear. Or walk directly through the cave into the tunnel opposite. So we have three choices, sword, spear, or tunnel. So the frozen orc is pointing at the sword. I'm just going to read it again. Sword or spear, strength or fear, how to choose, win or lose. And the orc is pointing towards the sword. Hmm. I'm thinking sword. We have a circuit. That's not very circular, is it? Okay. I think this is 88.
Okay. Sword, spear, or tunnel? What have we got in the chat? We already have a sword. Yeah, is the goblin wearing a collar? It's an orc, and I don't think it's wearing a collar. No. I mean, the sword looks very, very nice. It's a very nice sword. So, nine people said sword. Five said spear. Three said tunnel. So, we're going to draw the sword from the pool, keeping a finger on page 88. Two, three, seven. Gripping the hilt firmly, you tug hard at the sword. It comes free with surprising ease. You have chosen the Sword of Speed, an almost weightless yet strong and sharp sword. Add one skill point. Now, I'm assuming that that does actually increase our skill to nine and we can go above our original one. I'm going to assume that. That might not be the rule, but we're going to play with that because it makes more sense. So, we have a choice. We can rummage through the Orc's backpack. If you want me to do that, put the word backpack. Or we can walk directly through the tunnel opposite. If you want me to do that, put the word tunnel. So the two options are backpack or tunnel. I'm going to put an orc in here. Orc. So there's the sword or spear. Put that on here, actually. Sword, spear. I wonder what taking the spear would do. We'll find out next time we play. Now, I'm going to keep just check the time. It's ten past six. So, just to let you know what my plans are for today. Uh, after we finish this playthrough, I'm going to go for dinner. We've got the leftovers from the Christmas dinner yesterday. Um, and then, at seven o'clock tonight, is the Patreon meetup. So, if you are a Patreon supporter of mine, you should have received uh, a message about a few days ago, I think. Uh, no, in fact, I sent one out today. I sent one out about an hour ago, or an hour and a half ago, or something like that. Um, we're having a meetup tonight, so uh, basically a, a holiday get-together for Patreon supporters. Um, if you want to join in, it's on the Discord channel tonight. There's a special category, special room that's been created on the Discord channel, and that's happening at 7 o'clock tonight. So I'm going to be doing this for about another 15 minutes today, um, and then if you want to follow on with part two, that will be at 5 o'clock tomorrow, uh, but then we've got the Patreon meetup this evening. Right, 14 people... I've said we're going to search the backpack. Okay, 354. 354. Inside the backpack you find a pair of old leather sandals, a stuffed rat, and a mouldy loaf. Okay, so sandals. Uh, a stuffed rat. <laughs> and a mouldy loaf. Speaking of mouldy loaves... I think we're going to have some Brussels sprouts. We're going to eat some Brussels sprouts and get four stamina back. How many is that? We're on 15. Let's have some more Brussels sprouts. Let's have four more. There we go. Right. Next. Oh, if you wish to eat the loaf, turn to two, four, right. Okay, do we want to eat the loaf? If you want us to eat the loaf, put the word loaf or put the word tunnel. So lots of options. So maybe we won't eat that just yet. Because the chat might tell us to eat the loaf and it might be good. So, yeah, never set off on an adventure without a stuffed rat. So, <laughs> uh, loaf or tunnel? That's the choice right now. We can't eat the rat. Rick's trying to turn this into a role-playing game. <laughs> yeah, we can't eat the rat. It's a stuffed rat. Now, personally, I don't think I don't think eating a mouldy loaf is is a good thing to do. So the chat is all going tunnel. We're we're going to go tunnel. Yeah, nobody's saying eat the mouldy loaf yet. So there we go. We've had a Brussels sprout, and now we are going through the tunnel on the opposite side of the corridor. And I hope there isn't much more in that direction, because otherwise my map's not going to work. Right, two, two, one. Yeah, nobody has said eat the mouldy loaf. Thank you. Two, two, one. The tunnel turns sharply to the right. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, at the entrance to another cave from which you can hear a stringed instrument playing gentle music. 
your view into the cave is partially blocked by an old tattered animal skin hanging down over the entrance, but you can see the lower torso of a man wearing green and purple hose and pointed red slippers. If you wish to throw back the animal skin and enter the cave, if you want me to do that, put the word enter, or we can keep walking along the tunnel. Uh, if you want me to do that, put the word walking. So the two options are enter or walking. So turn it turns sharply to the right at the entrance to another cave. Okay, so there's another cave here. And there's some kind of person inside, like a minstrel, playing a musical instrument. And we can either enter or ignore him and walk away. Enter, 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 walk, walk, enter, 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 walk, enter, steal his shoes. <laughs> At the moment, the majority of people are going with entering. Oh, very good, Neil. Is it really a stringed instrument or is somebody somebody being a liar? Yeah. Love the puns. Looks like we're entering. We are entering. Uh, so this is 221 B Baker Street. Okay. Uh, throw back the animal skin and enter the cave. 303. The man before you is a minstrel. He is wearing a green and purple checked tunic over his hose and continues to play his lute despite your intrusion. Two large clay pots are the only other things in the cave. Right, we have three choices. Attack him with our sword. If you want us to do that, put the word attack. <laughs> Ask him about his music. If you want me to do that, put the word music. Or nod politely and leave the cave to continue along, along the tunnel. Put the word leave. I pretty, know, pretty much know what you're going to say. So it, the three options are attack, music, or leave. I'm assuming you're going to say music. And I don't know whether there's a another uh, exit to this. So this is going to be minstrel. So yeah, I've been thinking for years how hard it would be to create one of these books. And I remember speaking to Vicky about it last year, and I think a little bit the year before, that I really want to do it, but I think I think it's harder than you think, because if it was easy, everybody would be doing them. Um, and that's, that's, that's my problem with it. I kind of go into it thinking, oh, it'll be easy to write my own, um, and then it, it, it probably isn't. So... Yeah, it kind of puts me off trying to write my own because I don't think I've got the skill to do it. Um, and it, it might take a long time and a lot of work. Right, 14 people are saying music. Um, but if you do want me to create, write my own, let me know on the Slack channel. Start a discussion uh, about what setting. Probably be fantasy for me. But I've already got ideas that I wouldn't want it linear. I'd, I'd, I'd want something a bit different. Right, 80. The minstrel looks amazed that you are interested in his music. He stops playing and says, You must be new here, as the ignorant scum who live around here, apart from our beloved Snow Queen, of course, will not listen to my music. The fools, if only they knew what fortune I could bring them with my songs. Stranger, I can play a song for you that will heal your wounds. Listen carefully and watch. Later, tell that rabble about it, and perhaps they will come to respect me and my music. The minstrel then starts to play a soothing tune, and you watch amazed as one of your wounds heals. Add four stamina points. Oh, we only get one. Uh, Come back for more treatment sometime, he says, looking pleased with himself. You thank him and leave his cave to continue along the tunnel. Right, okay, so we know that next time we play, we can go there and we can heal for four. Heal four if you're nice to him. Okay, we are going to continue along the tunnel. How are we doing for time? Quarter past six. We'll play a bit more. In the distance, you can hear chanting voices. Soon, the tunnel ends at the entrance to a large cavern. Kneeling down before an ice effigy in the shape of a demon, with their hooded faces pressed to the ice floor in worship, are ten of the Snow Witch's followers. 
There are two exits from the cave, one straight ahead and one to your right. So the two options are, we can pretend to be one of the worshippers and walk boldly into the cavern. If you want me to do that, put the word pretend. Or we, would, we could creep cautiously into the cavern. If you want me to do that, put the word creep. So the two options are pretend or creep while I do the map. So we have a large cavern and the exits are one straight ahead and one to the right. Okay, it's a large cavern, one straight ahead and one to the right. And this is one, one, one. So yeah, pretend or creep. What have we got? What have we got? Rick says we should do one together. Well, we are doing one together. <laughs> so eight for pretend and nine for creep. Okay, right then. So just, it's close, it's the closest one we've got. Okay, we are creeping in, creeping cautiously into the cavern. Two, eight, three. You breathe in deeply and walk stealthily behind the effigy towards the tunnel opposite. 370. Okay, so we, we have a... It looks like we don't have a choice if we were creeping. We've got to go straight on. 370. You are almost at the entrance to the tunnel when the worshippers stop their chanting. They stand up and one of them calls out to you, asking why you did not stop to sing the praises of the Frozen One. Gulp. If you have a magic flute, you can tell them that you have been ordered to go and play it for the Snow Witch. Otherwise, you can either fight them or try to run through the tunnel. Okay, two options are fight or run. So we've been, we've been stopped. We were sneaking around. It was all going okay. And we don't have a magic flute. So I don't know where you get the magic flute from. That might be if you've gone another direction. We'll, we'll see next time we play it. Uh, but yeah, let me know whether we're going to fight or we're going to run. And yeah, we're, we're only going to be playing for a few more minutes today and then I'll be back tomorrow at the same time. So we have run, run, fight, run, 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 fight, fight, run, fight, kill the bard. Yeah. <laughs> we get the magic flute from HR Puff and stuff. I, I, <laughs> I don't think the bard had a flute, but you might, you might be right. If we attacked him, maybe he did have a flute. So it looks like we're running. Run! Right, okay. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Here we go. We're trying to run for the tunnel. Turn to 33. What's the worst that could happen? 33. We've only got four Brussels sprouts left. 33. The followers are a group of goblins, orcs, and Neanderthals. As you make a run for it, the, the two creatures you are who are nearest try to stop you. One cracks his whip, trying to wrap it round your legs, while the other aims a dart at you. Test your luck. Now, our luck is 10. We are lucky. Uh, turn to 2-2-6. Both the dart and the whip fail to find their mark and you are able to run through the tunnel. One three seven. The tunnel ends quite soon at a T-junction. To your left, you hear cries for help. If you wish to go left, or we can go right. But that is where we're going to stop it for tonight. So we are at a T-junction. Uh, the T-junction is 137. And we can go left or we can go right. And there are cries for help at the left junction. But yes, we are done for this evening. We did quite well. I've really enjoyed this. This has been fantastic. Big thank you to everybody for joining me. Uh, five o'clock tomorrow is when we will pick up from where we left off. We'll carry on. 
and we will have and the first decision will be uh, left or right that is where we're going to be so again as mentioned at the start thank you very much to all of my patron supporters for helping fund the channel um, yeah your support basically makes these videos possible and uh, if you are considering supporting me on patreon you do get access to a number of behind the scenes videos as well uh, one thing that we are planning to do in the new year um, is that we're planning to play through or at least start playing uh, another adventure game book which is called blood sword um, it's actually a multiplayer one uh, and i think we're still looking for two other players i think we've got chrissy uh, and brendan who are going to be joining in and uh, we do have space for two more uh, and that's going to be happening i think on the monday the 3rd of january is when we're going to be doing it and that will be streamed but it will that will only be a patreon only stream so again if you're a patreon supporter you get access to to some things like that i'll post about that in the new year but yeah we're going to be we're going to be doing that together um and yeah as chrissy says please give the video a thumbs up uh, leave me a comment if you've enjoyed it uh, help spread the word about these videos they're really good fun all of these books i think are still available in one form or another you can probably buy the old ones on ebay and they've been republished many times over the years by by different publishers i don't actually know if they're currently available uh, as in new copies but yeah there's various ways that you can get hold of them anyway i'm going to go in for my dinner and as i mentioned earlier on there is the patreon meetup tonight happening on discord in about 35 minutes time um so i will see some of you then but for now take care thank you very much for joining me happy holidays and i'll see you tomorrow <laughs>